Good morning. This is the Buckeye Valley Teacher Showcase Reflection Video. I'd like to introduce the teachers that participated in the showcase. My name is Eileen Shepard. I'm a fifth grade science teacher at Buckeye Valley Middle School. And my name is Lindsay Bowman, and I am a fifth grade social studies teacher at Buckeye Valley Middle School. And so can you each uh, take a minute here in our reflection video to talk about what your leading question was? In fifth grade science, we study um, space, and so our leading question was, could we find another place in the solar system that it would be possible for us to survive? Um, in social studies, we talk about uh, how does where we live affect how we live, and so one of our units is talking about the regions of the United States, so we looked at how where you live in the United States impacts how you live in those different regions. So, Ms. Shepard, could you um, talk about your project that you did with your students? Yes. Um, the students got to pick one space object, it could be a planet or a moon, in our solar system, and they had um, an anchor project that everybody did where they had to research certain information about their space object and then create a brochure that had that information in it, and then they could choose to present um, the information either in a slideshow or on it create a, a website and their project their end project was to create a space station on their space object so if theirs was uh, mercury they had to use what they knew about mercury to decide if we could actually get there and create a livable place on mercury for us to go and miss bowman what did your students do uh, they were they got to choose what region of the United States they wanted to um, research. So they had packets of information for them to guide them through with the land and water in the areas, the culture of the area, the climate of the area, the um, products and natural resources of the area, and the landmarks. And so through their research, they then created a Google Slides presentation um, with the different information that taught, that taught us what they could find there, and then uh, they could find the different pictures for them to show the rest of the class what it was like in the different regions, because not everybody learned about all the different regions um, through just plain old researching. Sounds like a good project for both classes. Um, what did you think worked well? kids really enjoyed uh, using the computers, using mm -hmm. the technology. Um, they were very engaged in doing research. Um, it did help with their critical thinking. They would find different websites with different information and they would have to decide what to use or which, which mm -hmm. information was more up to date. Um, that, the research part of it worked really well. They were really excited to find what they needed to find and then when they moved on to their final project of the space station um, using the website creating or the slides presentation they real they got to choose and they really liked they helped each other they kind of sat in groups and they worked through if they had any questions or difficulties or how did you get it to do this and then mm -hmm. someone would show someone else how how it worked. It really was good for cooperative groups. Um, they were supportive of each other and then they loved doing their presentations at the end. They, we did the presentations the day before Christmas break and they were all on task and engaged and, and interested in seeing what the other students had created. It's nice to hear that the technology um, was integrated into the instruction, so that's good to hear. Yes. And Ms. Bowman, how did your students, what were some of their favorite parts of the project? Um, I think hands down the best part that they enjoyed was getting to see actual pictures of the different regions. Um, I had just come back from a trip uh, driving from Ohio to Utah and they were really into what did I see, what is it like, how did it change, I can't believe you went there and this gave them a chance to, um, while not see it firsthand, they could look at whatever pictures they really wanted to to find what do the Great Plains look like? Um, what does the Pacific Ocean look like out in the West Coast? What does the Statue of Liberty look like? What, where's the Sears Tower? Um, 
the number of comments, you know, that I had of how many pictures do we have to have? That's what they wanted to see. So it really showed me how much they don't know of other things and how into finding out that information they really they really want to find that stuff out. Good. Sounds like a beneficial project uh, for all of your students. Um, going down that line then, what would you say some of the biggest benefits uh, you saw from doing this project-based uh, learning activity with your students? What would you say some of the biggest benefits were? I would say their level of engagement, their level of interest. Um, they would come in, they would get out their stuff, they would get started, and it really did get them thinking um, thinking about what they were reading and what they were doing much better than if I were presenting the information and they were recording it. Mm -hmm. um, and they could, you know, they could go out and explore different websites or they could do a search um, and they would debate, you know, if two students were both researching Mars and one student found a website that said one thing and another student found a website that conflicted, then they would kind of go back and forth and talk through it and figure out which one maybe was correct. So I thought it was very beneficial for their learning. Mm -hmm. The same thing. Um, I think that their engagement was really high. I think that they were learning while they came in and there was a um, limited amount of downtime. It wasn't come in and wait for me to say this is what we're doing today. They knew exactly when they came in, maybe not what phase of it we were working on, but they knew to get the Chromebooks or they knew to get their research out and they knew what they needed to find and I think that we got the most bang for our buck in terms of the short amount of time we have in class. Great. It sounds like some real good benefits. Um, as with all projects, I'm sure there were some challenges. Can either of you speak to some of the challenges you, you and your students faced throughout this process? Um, I think having access to technology all the time was something uh, that we thought was difficult. I also think that um, knowing exactly where it was going to go in terms of the project-based piece was, re was uh, a challenging piece in tr um, personally, and then I think knowing how to guide them through a project-based thing, which is something we've never really delved into before. Um, Kids-wise, I think the hardest piece was uh, knowing the expectations and where they needed to go. It was so open-ended for them. And I saw some of the kids struggling with actually learning the programs, mm -hmm. actually figuring out how to make the slide presentation do what I want it to do, make the website look the way I want it to look. Um, and it was really interesting because some of the students who are very good at um, you know, reading and writing and doing school activities, they struggled a little bit when they didn't know how to do something mm -hmm and they wanted me to come over and fix it. And if I didn't, or if I was you know, working with something else, they kind of had to work through that and figure it out, um, which a lot of the kids are good with the computers and technology, but there's still a learning curve. They still need to figure out how to do things. So that was a challenge for them. Mm -hmm. So after reflecting on both the pros and the cons of the project-based learning, um, would you do an activity like this again or would you modify the project you, you did presented this year to your classes? What would you take in some next steps? Um, one of the things in watching back on the videos I think would be really interesting in extending the um, learning would be to look at at the beginning of the year versus now what, what do your projects look like, how could you have changed them, um, and just in the the growth factor of the kids, I think also giving them some more free choice of how do you want to present. Um, I know project-based learning gives them that avenue, but as a new project-based learning person, I was kind of um, narrow in my limitations for them. Um, so I would look back and try and make it a little bit of a broader thing for them to work through. I will definitely do this project again. I think it would be um, really interesting to 
if this one was this project was about space science, it would be I would like to extend it and, and do one with life science as well, um, and kind of build on what we learned with this. Next year when I do this project, I'm going to allow myself more time. Mm -hmm. I had it scheduled right before a break, and we, I ended up feeling rushed, like we have to get done, we have to get done. They needed a little more time. They needed to be able to explore a little bit more, um, maybe finish up their projects. Um, so I would give myself more time. And um, as Ms. Bowman said, I would expand the choices a little bit. I was pretty narrow with here are your choices, but I gave them choices rather than them coming up with it. Um, and I think as the kids get used to it, you know, maybe the first project-based learning, they have mm -hmm. limits, and then the second one, they're a little more free as they get better at the process. Mm -hmm. Well, it sounds like you ladies uh, enjoyed the project and really did a good job of thinking through it, and we're excited to hear that this is something you'll want to continue at Buckeye Valley. Um, thank you for your participation in the grant, and thank you, ITSCO, for your leadership. Thank, thank you. you.